Stephen Toulmin was a British philosopher and professor at a variety of prestigious universities in both the UK and the US. He is most well known for developing a model, appropriately called the Toulmin model, in his 1958 book, The Model of Argument. Understanding this model will help you not only identify the strengths and weaknesses of others' arguments, but may help you develop and strengthen the arguments you make. This video lecture focuses on the elements in the Toulmin model, in both the first and the second triads. Some of the wording may differ based upon the textbook or instructor, and some of the visual diagrams will vary as well, but the basic concepts are the same. Starting with the first triad, which has, of course, three elements. Remember that a claim is a single statement advanced for the adherence of others. In other words, a claim is the point an arguer is trying to make. The claim is the proposition or assertion or thesis an arguer wants another to accept. You can think of it as the final conclusion, which answers the question, so what's your point? You might say, you should do the dishes, or it's going to rain. There are three basic types of claims. Fact, which focus on phenomena, things, that can be empirically verified. Values, which are claims that you make involving opinions, attitudes, and subjective evaluations of things. Some people call these judgments. And policy, claims you make promoting an action that you think should occur. But let's go back to these two example claims. You should do the dishes tonight, and it looks like it's going to rain. Most people would follow up that statement or claim with the question, why, or what leads you to that conclusion? Because I did the dishes last night, and I checked the paper today, and it said there was a 70% chance of rain, both of which are reasons that would support the claim. That would be the second element in the model, the grounds, which is the proof or evidence that you offer to support your claim or conclusion. Other terms for grounds are data, fact, and evidence. Remember the terms differ based upon the textbook and professor. Grounds can come in many forms, like evidence such as facts, statistics, reports or other findings, and physical evidence. Credibility through the use of testimony or quotations, or various forms of analysis and reasoning. If you check the newspaper for the weather report, you would be offering evidence, so this would be the grounds to support your claim that the day will involve rain. Now the warrant is what connects the claim to the grounds. It's the inferential or mental leap that connects the two. Generally, the warrant is implicit, meaning that it is unstated. In one way, it allows the receiver to be involved in the argument, what some call message co-creation. If you met my daughter's dog, Grenick, for example, you would likely conclude that he is friendly, a claim. You'd be right, by the way. But why? The grounds might be that he is a golden retriever lab mix, or that he's a service dog. Okay, now what connects the grounds to the claim? What does being a golden lab or a service dog have to do with Rennick being a friendly dog? That's the warrant. One of the characteristics of both golden retrievers and Labradors is that they're friendly. Or, a requirement of being a service dog is that they not be aggressive. Warrants can be based upon the classic inartistic rhetorical proofs of ethos, or source credibility, pathos, which are emotional or motivational appeals. Pathos can also involve appealing to shared values, such as free speech, the public's right to know, honesty is important, etc. And logos, which involves both inductive and deductive reasoning, such as analogy, sign, causality, authority, etc. Now, we don't always say the claim first and then offer the grounds. Sometimes we state the grounds first, such as Rennick is a service dog, and then connect to the claim so you know he's friendly. Regardless, the warrant connects the claim to the grounds. So that's the first triad. Let's move on to the second, which involves three additional elements to supplement or support the first triad. The qualifier states how sure the arguer feels about the claim he or she is making. If I say, Rennick is a friendly dog, it assumes that there are no exceptions to that statement. I could qualify that claim by saying, he's usually really friendly, or he won't attack you when he's working. You can usually tell when a qualifier is being used when you hear words like sometimes, maybe, might, many, some, few, possibly, probably. Now, the goal of most arguments is not to prove something is universally or categorically the case. Instead, arguments focus on probabilities, so qualifiers often improve an argument. Backing provides additional justification for the warrant. It uses evidence or reasoning to make warrants that might be questionable more acceptable to an audience. 
In our example about Rennick, I might tell you all about the training service dogs go through, using reasoning, or I could cite some statistics, but in either case I'm backing up the warrant. Backing can also be used to support the grounds. If I offer evidence that you are either unaware of or don't trust, I might need to strengthen it by either qualifying the source or using evidence or reasoning to support it. I might pull out Rennick's birth certificate, yes he has one, to prove that he is a golden lab, or point to the vest that identifies him as a service dog. The rebuttal allows for exceptions or limitations to the argument. It answers the question, what other views might there be on this issue? It is an exception to your claim, admitting that there might be some circumstances or situations where the argument would not be valid. In Rennick's case, I could say, now if your dog attacks Rennick, he might fight back. I can offer a rebuttal when I first propose the argument, preempting potential arguments from you, or after the fact if I'm questioned. Now let's put it all together using a different example. You catch your 10-year-old sister smoking a cigarette. You chastise her, saying smoking is bad for you. That's your claim. You cite the U.S. Surgeon General's statement that smoking causes cancer as support or grounds for that claim. The warrant connecting the two is that cancer can kill you, and that would be very bad indeed. But your sister is only a 10-year-old and likely has no idea who the U.S. Surgeon General is, so you may have to explain that the U.S. Surgeon General is a spokesperson for the United States on issues related to public health, so he knows what he's talking about. Now you are backing up the grounds. You might also need to back up the warrant. Your little sister may not know that cancer can kill you, so you might offer examples of people she may have known who had died of cancer. You may end up qualifying your claim that smoking is bad for you by saying, most people who get cancer will die, and that is very bad. Being an intelligent kid, she is your sister after all, she points to someone she knows who smokes and hasn't yet died from it, so you may offer a rebuttal saying, sometimes cancer doesn't show up until later. So there you have it, the Toolman model broken down into both triads, the first being grounds, claim, and warrant, and the second consisting of backing, qualifier, and rebuttal. Quiz time, what are the elements in the first triad of the Toolman model? And in the second triad? Where does the rebuttal element appear in the model? Now you should not only better understand the model, but be able to identify the elements and arguments that you make, as well as arguments made by others. And just as important, you'll be able to identify which elements may be missing or weak so that you can both refute others' arguments and improve your own.